Hi, fifth graders. Welcome to lesson 9.2, Ordered Pairs. The essential question for this lesson is, how can you identify and plot points on a coordinate grid? Now, go ahead and open up in your GoMath workbooks to lesson 9.2, found on page 185, and let's get started. Now, let's take a look at this first slide together. It says use coordinate grid A, so we have coordinate grid A here, to write an ordered pair for the given point. Now, before we talk about how to write the ordered pair for the given point, on our coordinate grid, I want to talk to you guys about a couple of things. First of all, I want to talk to you about what is called the x-axis. And if you guys will look right here, this is our x-axis. It runs horizontal. And what I know is, I always have to move along the x-axis first before I can then move up the y-axis. So right here is our y-axis. And a nice easy way to remember that is this. In the alphabet, I know that X comes before Y. Now another thing that I want to talk to you guys about on the coordinate grid is this point right here. This is called the origin. And at the origin, the coordinate pair, the ordered pair is called 0, 0. So that's going to be our origin. It's where we always start from. Now for question two, they want us to locate where point B is located on the coordinate grid. Well, when I come over here to the coordinate grid, I locate point B right here. Now, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to circle point B so that it stands out right now, so I know that that's the point that I'm looking to find where it's located, and we're going to write the ordered pair. Now, my first step is going to be this. From the origin, 0, 0, I'm going to begin to move across the x-axis. So, we're at 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. And I know it can stop at 5 because when I go up right here, I see that B is located at 5 on the x-axis. So what that tells me is I can go ahead and write down 5 as my x-coordinate. Now my next step is this. I'm now going to move up the y-axis to locate where B is located. So here's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. And I can stop at 7 because when I look at B, I know that B is located at the 7 on the y-axis. So I'm going to go ahead and write down 7 as my y-coordinate. And so what I know is point B is located at 5, 5 on the x, and 7 on the y. So the ordered pair is 5, 7. Now my next step is to locate point D. So now I'm going to come over to my coordinate grid and I'm going to locate where point D is and I see point D right here. So I'm going to go ahead and circle point D so I know that this is the one I'm now looking at or looking to find. Now once again, remember, when you're trying to write the ordered pair, find the ordered pair. Start from the origin, 0, 0, and we're going to move along the x-axis first. So here's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, and I can stop at 9 because I know right now that D is located at 9 on the x-axis. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to write down 9 as my x-coordinate. Now my next step is this. I now have to see where D is located on the y-axis. So I'm going to start right here once again from the origin 0, 0, and I'm going to move up 1, 2, 3, and I'm going to stop at 3 because I know point D is located at 3 on the y-axis. So I'm going to go ahead and write down 3 as my y-coordinate, and so I now know that point D is located at 9, 3, and that is my ordered pair for point D. Now my next step is to locate point F. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to locate point F on my coordinate grid, and we'll go ahead and circle point F, and it's located right here. Now, once again, we're going to go ahead and start from the origin, 0, 0, and we're going to move across the x-axis first, because remember, x comes before y. So we're going to move across first, and here's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. And I'm going to go ahead and stop at 6, because I know that F is located at 6 on the x-axis. So I'm going to go ahead and write down 6 as my x-coordinate. Now I'm going to locate where f is located at on the y-axis. So once again, starting from the origin, we're going to move up 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and I'm going to stop at 5 because that is where f is located on the y-axis. 
So I'm going to go ahead and write down 5 as my y coordinate, and I know then that point F is located at 6, 5, and that is our ordered pair. Now let's take a look at this next slide. This next slide says to plot and label the points on coordinate grid B. Well, right here we have coordinate grid B, and remember, a few parts about our coordinate grid. We have the x-axis that runs horizontal and the y-axis that runs vertically. Now remember, you always have to move along the x-axis first because when you think about it, x comes before y in the alphabet. So you move horizontally along the x-axis first, and then you can move vertically along the y-axis. Now, when I look at question number eight, they give me point R located at zero, four. So my job is going to be to both plot and label point zero, four, which is R. Well, what I know is this. I know that that first number, the zero, is my x-coordinate, and I know that that second number, the four, represents my y-coordinate. So I'm going to go ahead and label that right above those two. That zero is my x, and the four is my y. So what that tells me is, zero says, okay, from the origin, we're gonna move over zero places along the x. So that means I'm gonna stop right here at zero. Now the four tells me to move up along the y-axis, one, two, three, four places. So I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna graph my point right here, plot my point at zero, four, and I'm gonna go ahead and label that as point R. Because once again, the ordered pair is zero, four, so I move over zero, I stay right here at zero, and I'm gonna move up one, two, three, four places. So we now have plotted and labeled point R. Now the second point is point M. Point M is located at two, one. So what that tells me is that two, once again, is my X coordinate. So I'm gonna move over from the origin, I'm gonna move over one, two places, and the y, the one is my y coordinate, so I'm going to move up one. So we now have two, one. And we're going to go ahead and we're going to plot and label that point at two, one. So here is two, one. I'm going to go ahead and plot that point, And I'm going to label that point M because once again, the two is my x coordinate and the one is my y coordinate. So we moved over one, two places and up one to graph point M. Now our last point here is point Q. Q is located at 1, 5. Now remember, once again, the 1 is my x coordinate, tells me how to move along the x axis, and the 5 is my y coordinate, it tells me how to move along the y axis vertically. So if I have my 1 as my x coordinate, that means I'm going to move over 1 along the x axis, and then I'm going to move up 1, 2, 3, 4, five spaces along the Y to graph point Q. So I'm gonna go ahead and graph point Q right here. And once again, that's gonna be located at one, five. And then I'm gonna go ahead and label point Q on my coordinate grid. And we have now both plotted and labeled the points on coordinate grid B. And remember once again, X before Y. You have to move across before you can move up along the y-axis. Now, when I look at question number 13, this is one of our real-world problem-solving questions, and number 13 says, which building is located at 5, 6? Now, I'm gonna go ahead and label 5, 6 as a reminder. I know that my 5 is my x-coordinate, and the 6 is my y. And I always remember that because x comes before y in the alphabet, I have to move along the x-axis first before I move up along the y-axis. So what I'm looking for is the building located at five, six. So that tells me along my x, I'm gonna to have to move over from the origin, zero, zero. I'm gonna move over one, two, three, four, five spaces. And then up the y-axis, I'm gonna to have to move up one, two, three, four, five, six spaces. And what I notice is that takes me right to the price slicer mart. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to circle that point right here. And the answer to my question is, which building is located at 5, 6? The building is the Price Slicer Mart. So we'll go ahead and write that down, Price Slicer Mart. And once again, that is the building located at 5, 6. 
Now, let's take a look at question number 14. It's another one of our real-world problem-solving questions. And number 14 says, what is the distance between Kip's Pizza and the bank? So what I'm going to do first is this. I'm going to look at my coordinate grid here. And I first of all, I'm going to locate Kip's Pizza. So I'm going to come down to the coordinate grid, and I know that Kip's Pizza is located right here. And I'm going to go ahead and circle that point. So there's Kip's Pizza. Now I'm also going to locate the bank. And I know that the bank is located right here, so I'm going to go ahead and circle that point as well. Now, what I'm going to do next is this. I'm going to identify the ordered pair that represents both Kip's Pizza and also the bank. So I'm going to go ahead and start with Kip's Pizza. And remember, we have to move along the X first. Starting from the origin, we're going to make a count. So we're going to move over one, two places. And I know we can stop there because when I look, Kip's Pizza is located at two along the X axis. So above Kip's Pizza, I'm going to write down 2 as my X coordinate. Now I have to move up along the Y axis. So I'm going to go ahead and begin to make a count from the origin, and I'm going to move up 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. And I know I can stop at 8 because when I look here, Kip's Pizza is located 8 along the Y axis. So I'm going to go ahead and write down 8 as my Y coordinate. Now, I'm going to go ahead and do the same thing for the bank. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm begin, going to begin from the origin. Remember, you have to move along the x-axis first. And I'm going to go ahead and begin to make my count. So from the origin, we're going to move over 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. And I know it's okay to stop at 8 because when I look at the bank, I know that it falls on the 8 on the x-axis. So above the bank, I'm going to go ahead and write down 8 as my x coordinate. Now I'm going to do the same thing, but this time I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to move along the y axis. So starting from the origin, I'm going to make my count up. So we have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. And I know it's okay to stop at 8 on the y axis because when I look across right here, I know the bank hits at 8 on the y axis. So I'm going to go ahead and write down 8 as my y coordinate. Now I'm going to go back to the question because the question says, what is the distance between Kip's Pizza and the bank? Now there are a couple of ways that I can do this. I can start at Kip's Pizza and I can make a count of how many units are between Kip's Pizza and the bank. So if I do that, starting from Kip's Pizza, I'm going to make my count. Here's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. So the distance from Kip's Pizza to the bank is a total of six units. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to write down as the answer to my question six units. But I want to make another connection here too. In looking at my coordinates for the x, I have a 2 and I have an 8. I also know that 8 minus the 2 would leave me with 6. So watch right here. I'm going to go ahead and write that down. I know that 8 minus 2 is also 6. So when I find the difference between my two x coordinates, 8 minus 2, it also takes me to my answer of 6 units. And we now know the distance between Kip's Pizza and the bank. Now, as your homework for tonight, I'd like you to complete question number 1 and question number 2, as well as numbers 3 through 6 found in your GoMath workbook on page 186. Don't forget, somewhere on your homework page, we want you to assess yourself. Do you feel like you're number one, a novice, number two, an apprentice, number three, a practitioner, or number four, an expert? Don't forget, your homework for tonight will be to complete question number one and question number two, as well as numbers three through six found in your Go Math workbook on page 186. We hope you have a great evening and look forward to seeing you in class tomorrow.